Welcome to Live Free. I'm Angela K. Austin. Together, we'll discuss books, we'll explore the world, and we'll do it with some of my closest friends. And hopefully, we'll make new ones along the way. Hey, everybody. This is Angela K. Austin, and today I'm here with my girl, Lola Lace. Say hi to everybody, Lola. Hi, it's Lola Lace. All right. So I know a lot of you guys know Lola. Lola and I have been friends for a few years now, and I really wanted to invite her here to talk with me today about a few things. But one of the things that I just thought about that I want to make sure that we discuss is writer's block, because Lola and I talk about that a lot. But before we start to talk about that, I want to make sure that you guys know just who Lola is. So Lola, tell everybody who you are, what you write, and tell us why you write it. I'm Lola Lace, and I'm a romance author. I write romance books in all uh, genres. So I write suspense, paranormal, contemporary, and I'm also a screenwriter. I was a screenwriter first, and then I started writing romance novels. And so now I just go backwards and forth doing both of them. Okay, and now, you know, I want to say something else too. Lola and I have some similarities because we both have tried our hand at acting and all kinds of stuff. So before we start talking about your books and before we talk a little bit about writer's block, what was it like for you? Like what sparked your interest in writing? Was it your love of screenwriting that sparked your interest in, in um, acting rather? Or was it your love of acting that sparked your love for screenwriting? Which one of those came first? Well, first, I didn't have any love of acting whatsoever. So I only did that in order to be on the set so I can see how it operates because it was my goal to become a screenwriter and one day possibly direct my own film. So I just kind of was, I was a person who hung around the set and I acted here or there. You know, I was in a movie and it, you know, it was an independent film, but I didn't really enjoy the acting. I like being behind the camera. So that's where the writing comes in. I always wanted to be a screenwriter. And I wrote my first screenplay um, senior year of high school. So that was just kind of the goal forever. But when it didn't pan out, I kind of just moved over to writing novels. You know what, I, that surprises me because you did way more extra work, you know, in acting work yeah. than I did. You know, I did it for my undergrad. I started in theater. I always, I guess I, you know, like so many of us, I always love expressing myself, but which is really weird to say because I'm not necessarily an extrovert. I'm kind of whatever they call that ambivert type of person where I can be, you know, I charge my battery by being alone, but I do love to be around people who, you know, I have, a connection with or something like that so I can you know have this difference and whatever but when I was younger I loved you know loved movies loved books and like I would imagine myself in it you know if I watched a movie I imagined myself in the role like okay I like that character that's me that's what I would do and when I, I did the same thing with books so that surprises me that you didn't like the acting because you did so much. She did a lot more of it than I did, guys. I would go out. I'm like the extra in the back. I think I've shared this with people before, but my biggest role was playing like a crack prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've been in a lot, but yeah. um, music videos, TV shows, movies. Yeah. But it was, I mean, it wasn't, I didn't have anything wrong with it, but basically I had my spiral notebook with me and it was just me writing my next script while I was on the set, waiting my turn. So it was just something I did to like, you know, be in the atmosphere of movies, TV and stuff like that, just to see how it operates. Well, you know what, that makes sense because I think like everything that I really wanted to do, you know, I one of the, one of the, cause I'm a visual learner, like, but I'm, I'm like that, that um what do they call it that tactile person too though and so i like to like touch it do it whatever because then i can see how i need to modify or change it exactly. so that makes a lot of sense to me so with your screenwriting right now um what are you doing tell us tell us about single and ready a little bit but okay. you know but but tell us what else is happening with the screenwriting what are we doing there 
Okay, um, I wrote Single and Ready, I think I wrote it at the end of 2018 and it was produced in uh, January 2019. So that was just last year. And it started off as a web series. And what happened was the producer of the web series took it and put it together and made it into a movie that is currently on Amazon Prime right now. So when you watch it, it's more in a web series format instead of a movie format, but it was put together that way. Um, it was uh, the first actual um, screenplay script that I got produced. So after that, I got two more um, web series produced. And now currently I'm working on another, um, I'm shopping a pilot around. I wrote a pilot script, so I'm sending that out. But right now, currently, I am writing a different screenplay. It's a movie. Like the books of yours that I've read, you know, and the books that I know that you have out there, you focus, you know, well, you, you have a lot of books that focus on the African-American woman. And Single and Ready had an African-American woman who was kind of like at the center and this is what her, her dating life and dating experience. So with your other screenplays, are you staying in that lane or are you going more in a different direction, action or you know, anything else? Like, are you staying in the romance job? Well, everything, I, I try to have sometimes a romantic element in them, but the pilot script that I just uh, wrote a while ago, a few months ago, it is a vampire script. It's a TV series, so it, it's a vampire script, so there is romantic elements in it, but mostly um, it's multicultural, so it's not centered on like a Black female heroine. But um, the one I'm currently working on, yes, I want it to be an ensemble cast of Black women which makes me also have to ask. So I know, and you heard me say this before, you know, but you know, I write what I write because I was born and raised in the Southern part of the States. And quite frankly, you know, I like to see African-American women, I, I like to see us loved and desired and have passionate relationships. And I just like for black women to know that they can have those things. They don't have to accept, you know, something less than. So as you're writing your books and as you're doing your screenplays, you know, whether you have a multicultural cast or you're focusing on an African-American woman, like, like what's inspiring you to put those words on the page and to tell whatever that end story ends up becoming? Like, what was your motivation, you know, kind of behind doing either of the two screenplays or books? Well, um, definitely I was doing screenplays at first. I had an agent, but nothing ever really came of it. So, you know, people always say, write a book, write a book. And it's like, no, I don't want to write a book. If you tell someone to do something, they want to do the opposite of that. So after a while, I wrote my first book. It was a paranormal book. And someone at my job was like, oh, you know, I don't read that. If you write something else, I'll read it. And so that's what made, got me headed in the direction of romance because uh, I had never read a romance novel. So I didn't really know what I was doing, but I wrote my first romance novel and it kind of took off and that's what spanned so many other books. Um, so that's kind of what got me started in the romance genre. And so, you know, you kind of get hooked in it and you keep writing in that. And I had some screenplays I had written that never got produced. So I was like, hey, you know, I'm gonna take these screenplays and adapt them into novels. So two of my books, uh, Zebra Crossing and A Constant Reminder were actually screenplays first. And then I just made them into books because now I was a romance writer. Like, I love what you just said right there. So I talk to a lot of people who want to figure out, like, how do I get published? Like, you know, Angela, what about this and what about that? And, you know, and then if it doesn't happen for them, like I, I had for the longest time um, an author friend who all she ever did was submit her books to traditional publishing houses and it never took off for her. And so I had advised her to, you know, submit to some of the smaller digital press, you know, and then that didn't take off for her either. And she, you know, felt so, I think, like just uh, dejected, like rejected to where she just stopped. She gave up. She never tried the self-publishing route or just anything. She just gave up on the whole thing because, you know, other people didn't want what she was writing. And I love that, you know, you're like, okay, I started out with screenwriting. 
that didn't do what I wanted it to do. And so then I went into books and now you're going back into screenwriting. I love the fact that you didn't kind of give up on it because like the mainstream wasn't like looking for what you had to offer at that time, you know? So can you talk about that a little bit? What made you keep trying? Well, what happened was with the screenwriting, I did, I, that's what I did. Um, I would try to get my uh, screenplays published. I would enter contests and I would get the, you know, it was good, but not good enough. So to me, that was enough for me to keep going and not give up. You know, if you get some positive feedback, it really makes the difference. You know, if someone says this is trash, now you have to reevaluate things, but I never got that. It was like, hey, we almost put you through to the next round or whatever, but, and all the um, feedback that I got was pretty good. But I said, just, you know, keep on going, keep on trying. And then when it didn't pan out, it's like, you know what? I love to write. I love to write. I'm a person who I have, like, I have uh, uh, songs. I have raps. I love to write. So I'm going to write regardless. It's just finding what, what area best works for you. So I started writing the books and it was like, you know, that kind of took off for me. But the first book I wrote was a paranormal uh, vampire novel. And I did submit it to traditional publishers, at least 50. And it was like, no, you know, it was rejection after rejection, but I still wrote the second book. Then I wrote the third book. And then I started writing more in the romance genre. I just, you know, once you finish that first book, it's really, really, uh, it feels so good that you, if you really have the writing bug in you, if you have that creativity, you're not going to stop at one book. You're going to keep moving forward. You know, I'm sure some, everyone probably can write one, but if you really feel it, you will continue to write and you'll be writing 40 books. That's just the way it works. I completely agree with you on that because, and that's what I kept trying to tell her. And it's just, you know, Right now, what those publishing houses were looking for, it may not have aligned with what she was writing. But don't give up on yourself, especially if it's something that you truly love that's like, you feel like it's just kind of like in your blood, right? It's like, you know, when you, for me, you know, I, used, I was one of those people, like so many of us, had the diary when I was a little wee one, you know, and as I became a woman, I stopped calling it a diary and called it a journal, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it was like, who, you know, all of us, you know, it's, we all have these ways of expression, expressing ourselves. I did like you, I would do poetry, I would do music, you know, I mean, I played a few different instruments. I was always looking for a way to express myself. And for me, at this time of my life, it just landed on, you know, writing. I love it. I love cobbling together the stories, you know, right. and that was one of the things that I really tried to get her to do. But I think she just, you know, it's like at a certain point, you just get so much rejection. She could no longer find the positive in it. And she just yeah. kind of walked away from trying. And, um, and I say all that because I wanted to talk a little bit about writer's block, you know, mm -hmm. Because, you know, like with you, you did your screenwriting and all your other things and you came around to writing books and back to, you know, screenwriting, but you never gave up. You kept figuring out different ways to express yourself. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you and I and, and some of our other friends and stuff, we all talk about writer's block. And, you know, you hit that wall. And with this friend of mine, she hit that wall because nobody was looking and checking for her work. But, you know, like right now, for me, I have, you know, over the past so many years, I've just, guys, I've battled with writer's block for, you know, writer's block for a few years now. But in the current, the current climate of what's happening around us, how, how has that impacted your writing at all, Lola? I know for me, it really like, you know, I look forward to all of us doing writing sprints and all kinds of other things, although we don't write as much as we used to. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> but I look forward to, um, I, you know, I, communing or fellowshipping with other people who are in the game and in the game because we want to actually make this work for us. Mm -hmm. And so, but when you're having that writer's block and battling with actually trying to make a story come out of here <laughs> and get onto the computer, what's been working for you? How have you been dealing with writing in the current environment? See, my issue, I hate to claim writer's block because I don't think I've ever actually had a block for writing. 
it's a block for finishing a project that I start because a lot of times your brain has so many different ideas and things in it. It's hard to just concentrate on the one thing. So I, you know, I would feel like, you know, I can't say that I have writer's block. I can write, but the issue has always been for me from the beginning of writing, um, especially with uh, novels, is finishing something you started because you can start a novel and you get an idea for another novel and something is compelling you to write that now. And now with screenwriting being in the mix for me, it's a little difficult for me to st stay focused on a particular book that I'm writing because I will get an idea for another book or I'll get an idea for a script. And script writing comes so much more organic for me that it's so easy to slip over there and say, you know, don't write, you know, don't do this, go do this. Because I've written things during the pandemic, but it's just finishing things, you know, you kind of have to jump on it right away before you start thinking of something else, or something else pops into your mind to inspire you. You know, it's like, I do have different projects that I've started and then I'm like, okay, I need to finish this and work on this, you know, but I have gotten into, like right now, it's like I look for some positivity around me in places so I can just finish. You know, it took the, the, the book that I'm working on right now that is like, even like up to the moment that you and I started this conversation, I'm like, okay, I gotta get this to the editor. But it's like, I've been working on that book, I swear for like two years, you know, because it's, and it's not, um, it's definitely a novella, you know, at, you know, at its current state. Well, I guess it probably is considered full but you know and I do it does take me longer to write than a lot of people I would probably say for my full lengths it does usually take me somewhere around eight to nine months to get a book finished just because of the nature of how I write but I you know I have to say like for me I, it's like literally I have been hitting a wall with some of them because it's just like trying to make myself push forward and finish it and so you know for me you know guys it's really been great to have people who are in the game really trying to make a success of this that I can like call and text and, you know, and be like, Hey, what are you guys doing? You guys hear about this? You know, I was, I was literally, I literally just sent um, you a text. I don't know if you saw it a little before we started, but it was because, you know, of this whole desire to go wide with my books and, you know, and so I went on to one of the websites where I'm trying to make my book available and saw that somebody had uploaded a PDF, you know, of my book. I'm like, wait, that book, <laughs> it's like, how long has this PDF been on this thing, you know? Okay. And why would the website allow them to put that up there? You can clearly see the name of the person, you know, and I guess they could be like, oh, that's a pseudonym or something, but they literally have a, a full on PDF from the cover to the last page loaded up on that website. And, you know, it's just things like that, being able to talk about things like that with people. Right. So I'm like, okay, what, you know, what's my next option now? What do I do? How, let me get my book off of here so I can actually sell it and make a dollar off of it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's just wild that, you know, that during this kind of chaotic time in our history, you know, so many things are going on. I'm like, okay, but I got to focus. I've got to get my, my mind right. You know, and it's, it's really good to have people to be able to share that with. And I wish I, you know, did have your problem, Lola, like got so many ideas. I'm like, yeah, these ideas, I'm trying to get them out there, but you know, hey. It's not enough hours in the day. It's just not enough hours. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I try, but it's so many, un I have so many unfinished novels and it's like, when will I ever have time to finish these things that have thousands of words in them? And it's, it's basically a, a question of just focusing on one thing, but in the pandemic, in life in general, having your regular everyday things you have to do, it's hard to really keep a focus on one thing. So I'm going to try. You know, and, and look, we all try. We're going to keep trying together, see what we can make happen. So, um, and that brings us to what books are you working on? You know, tell us what's happening with some of these, with some of these projects. Where are we? What's the next thing? Okay, well, um, I know the script that I'm currently working on. I definitely, I'm set up a me meeting with a producer, but I, I don't have a finished script yet. But I do definitely want to set, set up a meeting 
with him because I, you know how you meet people and sometimes they can actually get your work produced. So that is the goal with all screenwriters. You want to get your, you want to see your stuff on the screen. And since I have a few screenwriting credits now, you know, I'm in a better position to shop my work around to people to see if they're willing to, you know, do what it takes to actually get the film made. Um, as far as the books are concerned, I am working on a book that I was working on with another book. And you know, you have to choose which one has to be finished. So I still have that. I, I'm, I'm probably one thirds finished with that book. So hopefully I'll be able to jump right back into it. It'll be something completely different than the single and ready books that I just uh, came out with, um, single and ready one and single and ready two. Um, which were novels that um, basically were a companion kind of to the actual movie. So then right now, because and I forgot to ask you this question because I always like to ask it. Um, when we were talking about a Lola Lace book, so you have the single ready one and two, but what was the book that put you on the map, Lola? What was the um, book it was that fans... Or like, that's it, you got to start with this Lola Lace book. Which book is that? My first romance novel. And that's like I said, I didn't even, I had never read one. Like I wasn't familiar with romance because I never read it. I read Stephen King and stuff like that. So my first romance novel um, back in 2013 was Let's Play Ball. So I didn't even know that it would be a hit or controversial or anything like that because you would have had to read something else to know, to compare it to it. So that was my first, and um, it's a series called, called the Balls to the Walls series. And it is still today my most popular series. I mean, there are seven books in the series and it's the one I get asked about all the time because it's like, hey, when are you gonna write another book? And it's weird because you really want to, but, um, you know, your love for your characters is really not monogamous. So kind of when you're done with them, you put them away. And since I wrote seven books about the same characters, it's kind of hard. You literally have to jump into their bodies, like into the series completely. There's just, it's, that's a lot for my brain to have to reread all these books that I wrote starting in 2013 and I don't, you know, sometimes people, um, readers will like say the name and I was like, oh, I, I, I forgot the name of the character, which was the main character. So if you've written 20, 30 plus books after that, you kind of don't really remember. You have to really jump into the whole series all over again. And that's really a huge time commitment to reread seven books. You know, you have to take notes. Um, so you don't mess anything up. You got to make sure you send it to beta readers if you do finish the book to make sure you have everything because this happened before with beta readers. You'll give them a book and they're like, the car isn't gray. The car is blue. And I'm like, oh man, I wrote it and I don't remember that. So, I mean, that is something, that's one of my goals definitely for 2021 to write another Balls to the Walls book because it is my most popular series. You know, it's so funny you say that because I tell people that all the time. I, you know, I create, I try to create what I call book Bibles, but I swear to you, I have, I've only done one series that I've actually gone into with two books, but it's supposed to be four books total. But the first and second book of that series, I have print copies that are just highlighted with different things so I can like use it as a quick reference. And it, it's so crazy though, because it's, when you create the world, and I haven't written as many books as you, but it's like when, when you create the world, you would think that you would remember so much of it, but I'm like, wait, which wood did I use? And, and which whatever, did, you know what I mean? And so I have to go back to my book Bible and people are like, why don't you, like one of my friends challenged me. She was like, well, how do you not remember your own book? I'm like, you know, it's like, I may not have written 40 books, but I've written quite a few and I can't remember every detail. So right. when you write in the series world, you do have to like remember all of that. And I think, I'm trying to think one of the books I read in that, is Violation, is that part of that? No, it, it seems like it is because it's yeah. Balls to the Wall series. Yeah. But Violation, no, it's a standalone book. That book did really well for me um, because it was a basketball book. And doing yeah. That. Yeah, 
And so, and it also was a flip the script book because, you know, it was like the woman was more in charge than the man. So, yeah, yeah. I really enjoyed writing that, though. That was one of the first books I remember reading by you. And I'm like, I was trying to remember all of you. I'm like, wait, is that part of that series? Is it, you know, I couldn't remember. But but that was really, that was a really good book. Guys, I'm going to make sure I link it in this because that was Thank really, you. I really enjoyed. Um, and so the next book that we can expect from you is Single and Ready. Single and Ready too. Yeah. Okay. It's out now. So, yeah. Yeah. So now for people who have not seen the movie or who have not read that Single and Ready one, can you tell them about it? Because this one I thought was really cute because I sat there and I watched the movie and I was like, and this is, this is what's so funny. This is one of the differences between me and Lola. We were both at the same event. We both listened to the same dude say the same thing. We both have a love of, you know, theater, movies, books, writing. We both want to see our books manifest and become movies. We both are writers. We both have the same opportunity. Uh, but who has a movie and who does not have a movie? I'm just putting it out there. I'm just saying. <laughs> Lola was like, why didn't you guys just look the dude up, reach out to him? I was yeah. like, ah. so, you know, I'm just going to put myself out there. I did not take advantage of an opportunity that was sitting right in front of me, guys. But, um, but Lola did. It's about the storm here, guys. Can y'all see the dark shadows coming across my face? But um, <laughs> it's been raining here for days. But talk to us a little bit about Single and Ready, Lola, and just a little bit about how you got that book turned into a web series and then into a movie. I know we hinted to it a little bit at the top, but you literally did take advantage of an opportunity that was presented not only to you and I, but to so many people, but you took advantage of that opportunity. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Okay, yeah. Um, I met the producer of Single and Ready at uh, an event that Kasana Dwight um, uh, holds called uh, the Interracial Romance Author Expo. So it's down in Florida and it's an annual event for um, uh, authors and readers of um, interracial romance. So what happened was um, I met the guy who was the producer and I started talking to him. <clears throat> and basically, I, from what I gather, I was the only one author at the event who was actually a screenwriter from what I get, gather. So that did give me the one up uh, on others. And just to see if he was legit, I went and, you know, did my research. I Googled him, saw what movies that he had produced. And uh, so he had a lot of movies on Amazon. So he was a legit producer who actually had credits. So, you know, I went over to the internet movie database to see if he was over there. You know, I did all the legwork to see. And so when I did contact him or, and we talked, it was basically in regards to writing something completely new. So my book wasn't actually adapted into the uh, Single and Ready. What happened was this is my original idea. So what I did was I sent him a treatment of five different ideas and, you know, to see if he was interested in producing any of the ideas. So just five separate treatments for five separate shows. And he picked single and ready and then that's what what made me start to write it because you know why write it if someone doesn't want it it's a waste of your time so I gave him the idea saw if he gave it the okay and then I went to write it and so um shortly thereafter it was produced and I really didn't have a hand in that at all I didn't cast anybody I didn't pick the actors some certain scenes and words of dialogue were cut out but you know I didn't have anything to do with that part of it and I just want her to tell that story, guys, because take advantage of your opportunities. <laughs> yeah. That's all I can really say to that. You mm -hmm. know, we were all there. We all had the same opportunity. And to my knowledge, I don't know of anyone else who did, but if someone else did, holler at me, let me know. But to my knowledge, you know, you were the only one who really took advantage of that opportunity. And yeah, I saw that he was legit, you know, that's the, you know, did my research and I saw that he can make movies happen. That yeah. was like, okay, so this person really does get things done. Yeah, because it took you like what, was it like a year after the event, before the movie, before the web series started? Or Well, no, because uh, the event is in April. Yeah. And um, I wrote it sometime at the end of that, that year. Okay. So, 
then he produced it, uh, you know, he had to get the cast and everything together. It, it premiered in January. Okay. So it wasn't a full year from meeting him to it actually being on the screen. Yeah. Like I say, guys, take advantage of opportunity. It took less than a year for her to see that realization of something that she really wanted to happen. And I'm like, that, that was literally when that came out, I was like, girl, go. I mean, because it was just when you, I think when you really have something in your blood that you want to make happen, I really do think that you take advantage of every opportunity, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and this is something that, you know, like for myself, like, theater plays and movies is something that I really want to see happen but you know I've got to get on my grind just like Lola if there's something that you guys want to make happen you cannot sit and wait for it to come to you true and then also your age doesn't it's not a factor also because I know that if I went all those years thinking I would never have a movie that I had a writing credit on. Like I wrote this, mm -hmm. um, you know, cause I had been in things before, but the credit of writing something that had never happened. And then, you know, you, the years pass and you're like, man, I'm never gonna have that. And then you have it. So basically it is really important not to give up because at the age I am now, I would have never thought that. And then the screenwriting that's happening now, like I'm uh, discussing something with a producer now, you never think that what you dreamed in high school mm -hmm. that is you're going to get accomplished decades later basically so yeah. because we all have timelines you know like even if we don't say the timelines out loud be like oh by the time i'm 30 i'm gonna do this and when mm -hmm. i'm 35 i'm gonna do that we mm -hmm. all have these timelines and if we don't hit it by these timelines that are self-imposed then we think, okay, it's not going to happen. We give up and we walk away. And so, you know, I really, you know, that was some of the, you know, I really wanted to, to get people to see that, you know, through this interview with you, you don't give up on what you believe in. Don't let age stop you. Don't let gender or race stop you. Don't let right. other people's comments stop you. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm ready. I told Lola, you know, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm ready, girl. Do the premiere. You know, put us, put your girl in the movie. You know, we can all walk the red carpet together, Lola. You know, I just think that it's important, guys. If you have something that you believe in, something that you want to do, don't give up on it. Don't let anything count you out. You know, mm -hmm. keep trying. Um, so, Lola, how do we connect with you? How do we keep up with your book releases, your screenwriting? Where do we go to learn more about Lola Lace? Okay, the number one, the best spot on the planet to learn about Lola Lace would be my website. And it's uh, www.lolalace.com. And you can also connect with me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I mean, I'm a, a person who posts, so there will be content on my social media platforms. Um, but if you're interested in getting books, I am wide. That means all my books are everywhere. So you can get my books at Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Kobo, Google Play, and Apple iBooks. And also I do sell my books directly from my website. So I have a huge catalog. So I know there is something in there that you will enjoy for sure. And, and that's true, guys. Lola and also another friend, you know, of ours, Dahlia Rose. I'm like, good Lord, when do you people have this much time to write? And, and let me let me just say, I try my best. I, you know, I like when I'm, I'm like, okay, I got another book coming. Out. I'm like, I'm psyched right now. I'm working on like three different projects. I'm like, I'm gonna get all these suckers out. And it's gonna be yes, I'm gonna catch up with the team. And it's like, and then I look over and it's like, you know, they have like all these other books coming out. It's like, I give you credit, my friend, you are doing it because between like all of us, when we're all, you know, trying our best, because I I thought I was wide until I started having more conversations with all of these ladies and I realized I'm missing some opportunities. So I'm revamping my strategy for going wide, you know, which is, you know, how I found out about a pirated book on a website, you know what I mean? But it's like, you know, when you see people doing it, I'm telling you, it, it, it motivates me because I'm like, if you guys can figure it out and make it work, then why can't I? So I just got to keep grinding. So I'm telling you guys, go and check out Lola's website. Everybody out there in YouTube world podcast land, 
you can hear my voice, go out there and check out Lola's website. Check out Single and Ready. I, I thought it was a fun movie, and I think the book is probably going to be even better because of the simple fact that, you know, I know that Lola's got some things going on with book two, and I'm like, I just... I just want to know what happens after the yeah. final scene. I, I just need to More know. More details in the book than in the yeah. movie itself. So definitely the book is a different experience than the movie, yeah. And it's so funny, guys, because when the web series came out, I was like tweeting at Lola and texting at her like, okay, so what happened next? You know, <laughs> because I had you, why yeah, must you know. I wait? Why must I be a common person out there who doesn't know the author? But it was funny. I was like, tell me what's happening next. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to Single and Ready too, guys. So check out Lola's website. Check out her social media. You know, get in touch with her. Find out what's going on. See what she's got up next. You know, Lola, my girl, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate being on your YouTube channel. Thank you so much. And Lola, you have your own YouTube channel too. Do we need to do a yeah. shout out for that? You know? Yeah. Please, I mean, I, I'm I'm everywhere. So yeah, I'm I'm at Twitter, YouTube. I'm everywhere. I'm on Pinterest even. I'm everywhere. I'm on Pinterest. I don't. Is anybody still on Pinterest? I'm on Pinterest too. I mean, you know, it's got some great yeah. ideas and recipes. If you're a crafter, yeah. um, so check out Lola's YouTube. Everything. Everybody out there, YouTube World, Podcast Land. Thank you for joining us. I'm Angela K. Austin. This is Lola Lace catch us on your favorite social and i will see you all again soon thank you guys bye